So you've just taxied out to the runway, getting prepared for takeoff. Everybody is seated. Everything is going normally. You take the runway. The pilot dings the flight attendants, letting them know it's time to take off. And you're put into what's called line up and wait. And you sit there for maybe uh, 30 seconds or so. And then finally the tower calls up and says, time for takeoff. And uh, you hear this from the back. You think, oh, that's normal. Uh, normally I hear the engines go up and then they come back for a second and then they go up again and now we take off. W what is that? Well, these turbine engines need to spool up at the same speed. If they don't spool up at the same speed and one lags behind the other, it's like riding a buck and bronco up front from my perspective. The airplane wants to veer off one way or it wants to veer off another way. And so that initial push up of the power is to make sure that the engines are going to spool up correctly in sync with each other all right and then once that happens i hit the takeoff go around button we go for full takeoff power and the hope is that they sync up all the way to 100 percent together what happens if they don't sync up together let's take a look okay guys 1665 when two one zero six from way to wait left quick takeoff where is takeoff good luck i roll Okay, United 1665, they're right in that position that I just described to you. They've just pushed up the power a little bit. They got that initial spool up. Everything is good. They hit their takeoff go around button. Now the auto throttles take over. Both engines are going to spool up, supposedly, to 100% together. Let's see what happens next. Power United 65, to takeoff. Okay. United 1665, roger, and uh, let me know what you need. Okay, it's busy up in the cockpit right now. So what happened was they pushed the power all the way up, the auto throttles took over, but one of the engines only comes up to about 60% power while the other one goes up to 100% power. Now, the most dramatic is that one doesn't spool up at all and the other one goes up to 100. It's almost impossible to maintain directional control on an airplane when it does that. So that's why we do that initial little spool up before we go to full power. This one was 60 and 100, and they're gonna get a sharp veer one way or another. The pilots are looking out front, and I always try to set my gaze at a distance, like all the way down at the end of the runway, not right in front of me, so I can see any sort of variation in the center line. In the littlest variation, I get on the opposite rudder to stay on, and they, the pilot probably put a bunch of opposite rudder in and looked down at his engines and went, nope, that's not right, and then pulled the power all the way back to idle. Hopefully, both engines spooled down at the same rate, uh, and you don't aggravate the problem by one spooling down faster than the other, but they managed to stay on the runway. Let's see what happens next. United 1665, we're ready to clear the runway. We've got to taxi back to the gate. United 1665, roger. You can continue down the runway, cross on item one left, and what gate? Uh, we'll pass contact off. I'll let you know what the gate is in a little bit. Okay, so the controller gives ends up giving these guys like three different instructions about how to get back to the gate. The first one is he said, to keep going down the runway and you're clear to cross one right and one left. Those are the two runways that they're about to cross here at San Francisco. Why do they have to go back to the gate? Well, first of all, they had a problem with one of the engines. That's a big deal. Why can't they just go back and kind of push them up a couple times? And if they both, you know, work normally this next time, you go, ah, it's no big deal. Let's go. This isn't like your car. You're not driving along the road, and if the engine stalls, you simply just steer that stalled car over onto the shoulder and stop and call, you know, for a tow, tow truck. This doesn't happen in aviation, so they've got to go back and get this thing looked at by experts. This means everybody's going to have to deplane. They're going to have to get everybody off. Uh, they're probably going to have to tow the airplane someplace where they can do what's called a run-up on the engines uh, and to determine what happened. Was it a fuel pump that went bad? Was it uh, wind up the tailpipe? It, it could be a, just a contrary wind up the wrong tailpipe caused a delay in the spool up of the engine. Hard to say, but let's see what happens next with their various controller uh, instructions. We'll be right back to this, but first a quick word from our sponsor, Incog me. You wouldn't file a flight plan and then broadcast it to every stranger at the airport, right? So why are you letting companies track your every move online like they're ATC with binoculars? When I'm flying, I like to know who's watching me. Same goes for my personal data. That's why I use Incogni. 
Think of Incogni like the air traffic controller for your privacy. They file all the paperwork, make the calls, and tell the sketchy data brokers, yeah, this one's off limits, clear the airspace. And they actually do it. Since I signed up, I've had dozens of companies delete my data. It's like squawking 7700 for your personal info, except instead of declaring an emergency, you're declaring, stop tracking me, Chad, from DataCorp. And look, I don't have time to chase down 80 different websites just to say, hey, please stop selling my email. That's not part of my pre-flight checklist. There was a recent data breach at Grubhub where 17 million people's data was exposed. This is the exact situation that Incogni protects me from. Click the link below, use code Captain Steve to get 60% off the annual plan and let Incogni give your digital life some much needed turbulence avoidance. Because if anyone's gonna track my location, they better be paying me to land the plane. And thank you again to Incogni for sponsoring this video. It really helps us to make more content for you. Okay, sounds good, United 1665. Uh, how about a right turn there at Lima? Uh, and the, I'm sorry, left turn. Left turn at Lima, right turn at Fox Route 1, and then you can cross one right and one left. Okay, so first of all, he told him to go on the runway to cross one right and one left. Now he says to turn right on Lima. No, wait, hold on. Turn left on Lima. Then you can cross on Foxtrot one one right and one left. If I'm up there in the, because first of all, the two pilots are probably uh, trying to keep everybody in the back calm. The phone is probably dinging off the, the hook in the back of the airplane or at back of the cockpit. So the captain is now on this phone. He's taxiing the airplane at the same time, trying to figure out what happened with his engines, explaining to the flight attendants, yeah, we had to reject the take off, tell everybody to remain calm. The next thing I've got to do as a captain is I've got to hit the PA button. I've got to say, hey, everybody, it's me, the captain. Remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. I say it three times so everybody knows exactly what I want them to do. No big deal. We started our takeoff roll, but we rejected it. I'll explain to you in a few minutes why we did that. Meanwhile, we're taxiing back to the gate. Goodbye. Click. Right. All that's happening while this guy's giving them instructions here, there and everywhere. So here comes Lima. Supposed to turn left on Lima. What happened? I'm trying to get you to turn left when you can. If you miss Lima, you can use uh, 19 left, but turn left. Turn right back to left. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you miss Lima. It's going to turn left on 19 left, which is also no, one right. 1665 right, turn at Fox, Fox Trot 1, cross <clears> one <throat> right, cross one left. All right, Fox Trot 1, cross one left, cross one right, 1665. They're, they're on alpha. one right. Yeah, you can join Alpha. And uh, what was the reason for the abort? Uh, so I was going to think days, and uh, that's now what we think. I'm sorry, what is it? Okay, so he says our thrust was not engaged. That's kind of uh, where your auto throttle is not engaged. No, that's not it. It's kind of a weird explanation. Uh, the, I think the captain's going to chime in here in just a minute. I'm sorry, what is it that wasn't engaged? Uh, United 1665. All right, engine never came up to full power. We came up to about 50%. Uh, it would come to 100% power. Okay, I think that's the captain. Usually, uh, if there's a second voice that comes on, it's almost always the captain. Okay, this is very common. Now, the fire truck guys are always listening to everything that goes on in the frequency. And if there's an abort or rejected takeoff, um, they're wanting to know, are they going to be pressed into action? So they're probably putting their suits on right now. They don't know, was this a uh, fire? Was it an engine that came apart? They don't know any of that yet. So he chimes in and says, hey, do you need any assistance? And uh, here's what the tower tells him. Uh, negative on assistant, United 1665. And United 1665, Yeah, our right engine never came up to power. It came up to about 60%. Our left engine came up to power. And we, the airplane started to veer off the center line, and we avoided. Okay, so now he tells you the whole story of what happened. Uh, one engine came up to 100%. The other only came up to 60%. Don't know why, but they got to get it checked out. And... As he said, uh, we started to veer off center line. I bet they did. It's a real eye opener when this happens. Uh, we practice on this every year in the simulator. Uh, I'll have one takeoff at least, maybe two or more, uh, where one of the engines doesn't spool up. And it's 
it's a lot of work. You got to get right on that rudder immediately. If you get behind it at all, uh, the airplane's going to want to go off into the grass. These guys did a great job keeping it on the runway. They caught it just like that. Um, hopefully it, for them, it wasn't as dramatic as it could have been. Uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again, but they're going to have to go back and get this checked out. So good job by the crew at United. They did a wonderful job. Everybody goes back to the gate to go fly another flight another day. And it's got a really good outcome in the end, but a little scary moment there right in the beginning. Now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.